In this lesson, we're going to be talking about service valves and service valve positions. We're also going to touch on some other access devices. Okay, There's a variety of valves installed in HVAC systems to provide easy access to the system. Service valves are used to monitor system pressures, recover refrigerant, charge a system, and pull a vacuum. Some valves only provide basic access to the system. Others provide more controlled access because they have multiple valve seat positions to open and close parts of the system for isolation. A service valve is a valve with a wrench-operated, movable valve stem that blocks or opens passengers through the valve. Service valves also block or open a service port, which provides connection to the refrigeration system for taking pressure readings and adding or removing refrigerant or lubricants. This is an example of a basic service valve. You'll find this type of valve on the side of a condensing unit in a residential air conditioning system. It has an inlet and an outlet that's part of the line set. It will have a valve cap and it will have access port with a Schrader valve. That's probably one of the more basic types. Okay, service valves give the technician an opportunity to seal off part of the system while installing gauges recharging, or evacuating a system. Most of them require use of a service wrench, a refrigeration service wrench, to turn the valve stem. The valve bodies are usually made of drop forged brass. The service valves must be leak proof where the valve enters the valve stem and enters the valve. Similar to the refrigerant cylinder valves, service valves have packing installed around the valve stems. The valve stems are made of steel or brass. Before changing a service valve's position, sometimes it is best to loosen the service valve packing nut one turn. Skipping this step could cause the valve to leak. Now, some of the service valves you'll come across do not have a packing nut. Once you finish positioning the valve for a procedure, and before returning the system to regular service, tighten the packing nut up again. Service valves are connected to the refrigeration circuit either by flare or braze connections. They're also located on components such as compressors, liquid receivers. They're also, they are either connected to these components by pipe threads or by a bolted flange. Service valves have four different positions. They're back seated, front seated, mid seated, and sometimes they're just cracked open. This is an example of three of those four conditions. Front seated, you'll notice that it is all the way, the hose connection, which is your service valve connection, is closed. Back seated, okay, the gauge port is closed. Because your gauge port is right here. Gauge port is right there. Front seated, your hose connection, okay, which is basically to the system, is closed. Here, your gauge port is closed. Mid seated, all three ports are open. If the valve stem is turned counterclockwise, outwise, as far as possible, the valve is back seated. In other words, it's pulled all the way out. When service valve is back seated, it closes off its service port from the rest of the system. So no pressure readings or procedures can be performed. This is your normal operating system position. If a valve stem is turned clockwise inward as far as possible, the valve is considered front seated. When the valve is front seated, it blocks off the flow of refrigerant through the valve by closing off its regular passageway. By front seating the valve, we're providing a passage between part of the refrigeration system and the service port. When the valve stem is neither turned all the way in or all the way out, it's considered mid position or mid seated. This is usually done by, by beginning with the valve in a back seated position and turning the valve stem to complete clockwise rotations to push it in halfway. When the valve is in this position, it accomplishes two things. First, it allows the refrigerant to continue flowing as normal, and it also provides a connection between the rest of the system and the service port. For simple pressure readings, the service valve is usually just cracked open. Okay, basically from the back seated normal operating position, you basically turn the tube, turn the valve about an eighth of a um, eighth of a turn. It's just turned enough to lift the valve off the back seated position. 
It's good practice to crack open a service valve before opening it fully. Cracking open a service valve presents a, prevents a shock pressure rush, which can damage gauges or injure a technician if enough pressure is built up. Low side service valves are found on the low side of the system. A suction line service valve is a low side valve connected to, into a system suction line. In many cases, the suction line service valve is located much closer to the compressor inlet than the evaporator. It's often found on the condensing unit of a split system. During normal operating conditions, cool, low pressure vapor flows through this valve. A suction service valve is also a low side valve that connects to the suction line and directly onto the compressor at its inlet. The suction service valve is considered a compressor service valve because it is one of the two service valves connected directly onto a compressor. Valve caps protect the service port and the valve stem when the valve is not in use. Make sure you put the caps back on and tighten them down when you're done using it. This is the example of a service valve that might be mounted directly to the compressor. There's a bolt mounting that goes onto the compressor. You have your service valve, you have your suction line connection, which would go to your evaporator, and then you have a valve stem cap, which protects the actual valve itself. When a suction service valve is front seated, the suction line's passage into the valve is blocked, but a passageway between the service port and the valve outlet into the compressor exists. By front seating the valve, a technician can remove that suction service valve from the compressor while leaving the suction line sealed. Okay, this is just another example of the service valve. You'll see in here, this is a cutaway. You can see how the three different positions work. This currently is mid-seated. If you front seat it, you block the suction line connection. If you back seat it, you block the service port. By doing this small part, a technician can prepare to replace a compressor without having to recover the entire refrigerant in the system. High side service valves are found on the high side of the system. A discharge service valve is a high side valve that is mounted at the compressor's discharge port, providing a shutoff between the compressor and the condenser. A discharge service valve has the same four positions as a suction service valve. When the valve is front seated, the passage out of the valve into the discharge line and condenser is blocked, leaving the valve inlet from the compressor and service valve port isolated. Front seating the discharge service valves allows the valve to be disconnected from the compressor without refrigerant escaping from the condenser. So again, here's a compressor that has your discharge service valves on the high side or discharge side of the compressor. Suction service valve is on the low side. You can front seat both of these valves and then recover the refrigerant, replace the compressor or service the compressor, and then evacuate the pressure compressor. And then once that's done, you mid seat the valves again and you let the refrigerant back into the new compressor or the serviced unit. A liquid line service valve is a high side valve located in the condenser in the liquid line. In many cases, the liquid line service valve is located much closer to the condenser outlet than the metering device and is commonly found on the condensing unit of a split system. A liquid line receiver valve, LRSV, is a high side valve connected to the outlet of the liquid receiver and the inlet of the liquid line. These valves also are often three-way valves and enable the technician to charge liquid refrigerant into the system before it started the first time. Liquid receiver valves are often called king valves or receiver outlet valve. Another service valve is the queen valve and that's installed between the condenser and the liquid line receiver inlet. These valves are useful when pumping down systems for component isolation. Most service valves have a brass body and a steel stem. These service valves have a tendency to rust and score the valve gland or packing. Always clean and oil a valve stem before turning it. A dirty valve stem will ruin the valve packing and that will eventually begin to leak. Valve stem rust can be reduced by coating it with a little refrigeration lubricant before replacing the valve cap and the service port cap. Use lubricant specified for the refrigerator in that system. 
Service valves must be in good condition. Three things that can be done to maintain a good operation and extend the life of a valve. First, match the correct service valve wrench size to the valve stem to prevent stripping the valve stem head. Do not use an adjustable wrench or a fixed open end wrench. Second, maintain the packing so the valve does not leak. Third, oil the threads of the service board each time gauges are used. Now, there's a few other types of access ports that you can use when or systems come with that a technician can access the system to measure pressure without stopping the flow of refrigerant or opening the system. We have some areas that are very good places to install access ports. Refrigeration system access port is a small valve opening that usually contains a Schrader valve core and is used for checking pressures and servicing a system. Access ports are often installed to an evaporator outlet or liquid line inlet and are typically installed just ahead of the metering device on both sides of the automatic valves in the system. Access ports can be installed adjacent to metering devices, solenoid valves, bypass valves, hot gas defrost valves, and dryers. This is an example of an access port. It's equipped with a Schrader valve. A Schrader valve consists of an externally validated hollow tube with a spring-loaded coaxial center pin that blocks access through the tube. The tube can be opened by depressing the pin against a spring pressure. Refrigeration hoses that have a pin that pushes the open Schrader valve as the hoses get tightened into place. When the hoses are removed, the spring pushes the Schrader valve pin back to the closed position. Now, you can also have to install these on occasion. Okay, you, you can, having external threads allows the Schrader valve to be used as valve cores inside the access ports. The valve core can be removed from the access port for certain procedures, such as pulling a vacuum. Technicians must use the valve core remover that mounts on the access port to remove the Schrader valve for charging and evacuation of systems. This tool also allows for replacing defective Schrader valve cores without losing the refrigerant charge or vacuum. This is an example of a Schrader core removal tool. It has an isolation handle, has a retaining valve to pull outward, okay, and has an access port for your gauge access. Another way to access a system is by use of a piercing valve. Okay, what it does, it basically allows you to access a small hermetic system without access ports. The piercing valve is a valve that's secured to a length of tubing and access the refrigeration by piercing through the tubing. Piercing valves may be mounted on the suction line, discharge line, or both. There are two general designs of piercing valves. First, you have a bolt-on. Second, you have a braze-on. Now, because you cannot braze a system with refrigeration in it, braze-on piercing valves seldom leak, but require refrigerant removal prior to the brazing process. Bolt-on piercing valves do not require refrigeration removal prior to installation, but will leak over time. Bolt-on piercing valves are recommended for temporary access and should be removed and replaced with brazed-on access valves. So that's it. So on most refrigeration system you, systems, you will find the three-way access valves. On air conditioning systems, for the most part, you have the Schrader access ports. On small little systems, small sealed hermetic systems that come charged from the factory, Many times you do not have an access port and you'll have to install a, a piercing valve that should later be replaced with a brazed on valve. Access ports have the service valves have three positions. Back seated is your normally op, normal operation. Mid seated allows you to operate the system normally but with your gauges on. And front seated allows you to pump down and isolate components of the system. Never front seat the access port that is on the discharge section of the compressor. If it's between the compressor and the condenser, do not front seat it with the system running.